folks, it's Brian here. I am gonna do another video. So, I had some problems with my GoPro earlier. This video is gonna be on Xactimate Mobile. So if you haven't used Xactimate Mobile, you really, really need to check it out. It will change the way you write claims or estimates. So if you're a contractor, Xactimate Mobile is for you too. So um, I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently and I'm gonna use a Leica Disto. If you don't have a Leica Disto, don't worry, you can still use Xactimate Mobile. Check out my other video that shows you how to do it by hand, how to input the measurements. But let's get started. I upgraded my iPad today and I'm now on an iPad 6 generation, which is a whole lot faster. It's the same case. And it is the, um, I'm in a different room from the other video. So first things first, once you get into a claim, you're in Sketch. This is the toolbar. And the toolbar has roofs, rooms, windows, doors, brakes, stairs, fences, and areas. And these are the tools down the side. These are the different kinds of tools off to the side. We normally are going to work in dimension and sketch. Um, I don't think sketch cam is functional at this point. That's a personal opinion. Um, and it's worth noting I am not an Xactimate affiliated or certified trainer. I'm just an independent adjuster who makes a living with Xactimate, and I also am a level one, two, and three certified user, so I like to think of myself as well-trained. So anyway, you can pick up Xactimate Mobile. It's really not that difficult. So we're going to stay with the room tool. We're going to drop a room in here, and then we just pinch to, to pull the room up. If I want to move the room, I select it, and then I touch, hold, and drag, and it moves the room. If I want to modify the room, I can copy it with the copy icon down here, or I can access the properties here. So let's change the room name. We're going to call this, actually, we're going to use a custom name. So we're going to click there, and then we're going to use speech to text, East Bedroom. You know what? That's wrong. So we'll just back up. West bedroom. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's good. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Leica Disto to set the walls. So I need to get into edit mode. So I'm gonna click the wall I wanna move. I'm gonna click it again, that turns on the confirmation, I'm going to say, yep, yeah, I want to push the wall that way. All right, so I've taken that measurement, and now I'm going to do the other wall. All right, so now I've set the size of the room, and this room is 12 foot 1 by 11 foot 8. Now, I've got a door in here, so I'm going to go ahead and select the door tool, and I'm going to drop the door right here. No, nope, didn't work. So pick the tool up again. Click. There's the door. Yep, that's the right orientation. I click anywhere in the white space to turn it off. If I wanted to flip this door, that's where these tools come in. So it happens that that's where the door is. I'm going to set the width of the door so I'll access the properties of it while I have it selected. I'm going to select the width and then I'll measure it with the disco. Uh, it doesn't like the width, so we'll set it again. Okay, so it's saying the width is not valid, and what that means is it's trying to expand the door into the other wall. So what you want to do is just pick the wall, the door, and just hold and drag it down. It puts it in another place. We'll go back. We'll pick the door, open the properties, go into the measurements. And normally I do this while I'm holding the iPad, so it's really fast. I walk around and, I, and, I, and I'm catching the, the sizes as I go. Okay, so I've got a window, so I'm going to switch to the window tool. And I'm going to just pop it right here. And I'm going to go into the window properties. And I'm going to set the base height. This is normally the first property you want to set. All right, so once we have that base height set, we close that, we'll set the width. Hopefully I won't drop the blind. 
find that I'm moving out of my way. All right, so I've got that width, and now I'm gonna set the height. All right, so at this point, I've just completed a window measurement, and I also need to set the properties. So it is not a picture, it is a horizontal sliding window. There's no window grid. Boom, my room is looking pretty good. So a couple other things you can do, you can go into 3D and you can look at the, the room to see if it's, it's looking the way you want. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to 2D. You can also add levels. This is where you add sketches and levels is, is the house with the pencil icon. Um, so, but wait, there's a closet in this house in here. So what I'm gonna do now is switch to the break tool and I'm just drop a break here and I'm gonna pick this, this uh, little box here and just drag it out. As I drag this out, now what Xactimate is asking me is, did you want to make the room bigger or did you want to add another room? So if I click anywhere else, it adds another room. I'm going to click undo. I'm going to add and put that break back, pick this up. I'm going to add a room. This is a closet. So I'm going to go in here and change the name of it. All right. Closet. I forgot to set this as a subgroup. So now it's a sub, sub room of the other room, and I need to get the measurements on this. All right, so there is the depth of the closet. And I actually don't want to set that side. I want to set that side. Now let's put the door in here. And that door actually faces the wrong way. Oops, didn't want to do that one. So we'll set the width of the door first. And then we're gonna flip the door because it actually sits there. Now, let's say that this door is not quite where I want it. So I can come over here, pick it. I touch and hold, oops. And two fingers will move the sketch around or pan the sketch. So I'm gonna zoom in here, I'm gonna pick it, and then I'm just touch and, and drag this where I want it. So, uh, you know, it's approximately there. That looks about centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the rest of the upstairs here. I'm only gonna do the stairwell. So I pick this and I'll drag this up here. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this. Okay, and this isn't quite right. In fact, it's not right by a long shot. Because there's a linen closet here. upstairs hallway okay
I don't, I'm real picky about my labels. So I had more than one room selected, so I'm gonna come back here and fix that. All right, I'm, like I said, I'm real picky about my labels. I'm gonna go ahead and set the depth of this. That's a measurement that would have been irritating to get on a good day. Because that is the top of a stair. So now I've got my stairway. This still doesn't look quite right, so I need to fix this. And I'm going to delete that door because I want to take... I actually want this measurement here, and I need to set this measurement. Um, so I'm actually going to undelete that door. I've got an issue there where I should have done this maybe a little differently. So that's seven foot. Let's see if we can put a line in here. All right, so I also got an Apple Pencil today. And it allows substantial precision. All right. So at that point, I've got the line where I want it, so I'm gonna delete it and this is a really useful tool for things like this. So the Apple Pencil is $98. Um, I think it's well worth it because it gives me the precision that I wouldn't otherwise have. So let's, let's be froggy here and let's go ahead and drop a staircase in and uh, we're going to sketch them. Okay, so everybody that knows about stairs knows that this is not a finished. And these are actually, let's see. So there's our flip. There we go. Now, this is not perfect, and I don't, I don't really expect to get these perfect. Um, I am going to mess with this just a little bit more to see if I can get it right. Actually, what we need to do is delete the stairs and start over. So that's all the undos that I have. Let me pull those out of there. Uh, yeah, they're being bad. So.
So I just screwed my sketch up. Um, and this is, this is kind of a problem. This would be very, very difficult to fix. So, and actually, you know, now that I think about it, that may not be a problem because we actually need the stairs to come from this side. And these are complicated. They actually turn, there's a, there's an, a turn landing here. So I think at this point we need to exit the project and come back in. And there's a reason for this. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like messing with this, this angled staircase that's in here. So, um, actually, you know what? Yeah, I do. how to turn this. Alright, so that works. I need certain things in order for this to work. And, and this may be something that just isn't good to do in here. So let's, you know what, I'm gonna backtrack. Let's go ahead and just throw a set of stairs in here. All right, you know what, that is good enough. There is an angle landing there. Landings are the devil to do even in desktop. So, and, you can double click and that zooms to extents. So, you know, this is a pretty good representation of this. The way this actually looks is um, there's another room over here. So, and I just zapped my stairs by accident. So let's put them back. Just, let's see. So we'll switch to the missing wall tool, which is in here. All right, so that just creates our, our um, set of stairs. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click done and I'm gonna pull this wall out. Add it as a, another room. Okay, and I'm just gonna manually dimension this to about 12 feet. And then I'm gonna pull another room out of here. All right, and I'm gonna pull another room in here because these are actually closets. I'm gonna select both of them. And uh, let's see, it won't let me name both of them at once. That's fine. Go in here. East bedroom.
I'm looking at this at an angle, which is making my life a little more difficult than it needs to be. So, and the way this actually works is it actually looks like this. So you're starting to see a pattern here. This is actually really quick when you are working with it. All right. So that begins to give you an idea how fast this is. What you would do at this point is go into photos and you would select the rooms that each of these belongs to and you would start taking your photos. Um, so you'd go into here and you would take a photo like this and you'd take some photos, okay? Now, I wanna see if something works here. That's why I bought the Apple Pencil. I don't know if I do this in a claim, but it certainly makes it easy to highlight the photo. So at this point, I've just marked up a photo that's in my claim. Um, you know, I could very easily go in here and if I wanted to be more conservative in my notes, I could do that. That is way, way faster than doing this with the tools that are built into Xactimate on the desktop. So, you know, it'd be really easy to see, you know, there's, there's times where you wanna pick that stuff. So all those photos now belong in the bedroom. And at any rate, this is what the claim flow looks like. And then when you're done, you exit the project and you send it to the cloud. So once you send it to the cloud, you pick it up on the desktop and you pull it down and you write the estimates for the items. If you did want to estimate, let me show you guys what that looks like real quick. So I go in here and... And this is one of the uses for lines is when you have it won't dimension this for me, so I'm just fixing the sketch. And so one of the things I can do, shrink that a little bit, pick this. Actually, let me go get something else. I'll be right back. The price list. There's some stuff in here that is pretty cool. So we'll go to required. We'll load a price list. And actually, you know what, let me, let me just get out of this. Let me show you how this normally works. So you add the address based on the location. All right, it doesn't like my address, so Let's see, you know what, it doesn't matter if you know where I live or not because it just doesn't. I'm not real hard to find. Sometimes you can pull an address in. So I'll save an address. Oh, it's being stupid with me today. OK, 
Okay, so now I can pull, and it's still being stupid with me. Normally price lists are already assigned, so this is a non-issue. It's gonna download the price list. Normally it's not this slow. Okay, there we go. We'll set the tax as high. Don't hit complete. Complete completes, com it, it will complete the file and that's not what you wanna do. You wanna return, exit and return it. So now that I've done that, I can go in here and I can search I can see the items that are in the estimate, I can search, I can use macros, and I can use reference. Okay, reference search is what you're used to, and I think this is coming out of X1. It's actually a pretty nice, so in my particular case, I know the item codes. There's no, there's no space between them. All right, so I can go in here and, um, details it doesn't have you know so i've got i don't even know where i just added the carpet um so we're not going to put that there so it's giving me grief so i'm going to add carpet to these rooms um I'm going to go back and add pad to these rooms. Okay. I don't think this is good for complex losses, but I think for simple losses, uh, this is easy. And what if you are, you, so you send that back by swiping right. So what if you go, oh, hey, you forgot to put the, the window in over here. You know what? You're right. So let me copy it. Boom, because they are the same size windows. Now the windows in the um, bathroom is different. It's a double hung window. So I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave this stuff alone because it's just not important at this point. So we'll put it in as a hung window with no window grid because those are ugly. And we'll just pick this up and copy it and there actually is another one over there in this at the top of the stairwell and then let's go in here and look at this in 3d and you know is it perfect no but it looks pretty good and I could set the ceiling heights this window is actually much higher let's see if I can get something to work here Yeah, um, in 2D you can do some editing here, but I don't, I don't need to do that. You know, this is good enough for the average customer to see it and understand it, and this is quick. Um, you know, it would have taken me about the same amount of time to draw notes on paper. I know some of you guys are probably faster, that's cool. Um, the point is, is that, you know, in a few more minutes I could have taken all the photos I need, and I'm done. I walk out with a sketch and with my photos, my photos are organized by the room. I don't have to do a whole lot of labeling and I can go back and I can get busy with actually estimating and turn in my file faster than if I had to go back and take my notes and, and put them into the computer. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments below, like the video if you did enjoy it and subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos and uh, have a great day and be safe and make lots of money out there. It doesn't matter if you're a contractor, a PA, an attorney, or an adjuster, we're all professionals that serve the insured and the customer. And when we work together, everybody wins. Thanks for watching.